<laughs> All right, so what we want to do now is to make this look cooler, a lot cooler. We're going to go into the library and I'm going to type in the word bevel and I'm going to drag that in here. And I'll be honest, this is, this is one of my favorite nodes. I love this node. This is going to take a grayscale input. So we can tell that because there is no orange in here. So you can't plug a color in here. It has to be grayscale. And it's going to take any grayscale image and it's going to give you a beveled grayscale image it's going to give you like a height map so it'll make a nice bevel for here and it will also generate its own normal map according to this height map so it's kind of a two-in-one node and it's pretty awesome so let's plug it in to our outputs it's going to automatically drag to the correct um, output and the reason it won't allow me to plug it into any of the other outputs, and you'll notice this sometimes, uh, is because these outputs in the node, within the node itself, has been the outputs have been designated specifically to height and specifically to normal. Uh, most of, like this one is also specifically to normal. A blend node is not going to have a specific assignment to its output so you can plug it in wherever you want to plug it into that's why sometimes things don't want to go into certain nodules and there are tricks around that uh, the easiest of which is grabbing our transform 2d node and now it'll let me plug it in wherever i want to plug it in because i kind of tricked it because a transform 2d will take any kind of input it doesn't care and what it spits out is generic it'll spit out generic grayscale generic black uh, generic color uh, it doesn't matter so that's how you can get around doing that and again coming back out this way it's only it, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna work this way you have to bring it from that direction all right so we digressed a little bit. Let's get back to our bevel node. Now, right now, it's not really matching up with our color. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this so our color matches so we can see better what's going on. You know, and this is kind of nice. This is a very gentle, you know, very gentle gradient. It doesn't have, um, you know, any grout in the middle but we can change all of that again base parameters are the same this distance is what determines how big that space is in between your black areas and your white areas so as i'm coming back down to zero this bevel is it's the 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 distance of the bevel is is almost non-existent so at zero it's exactly what we see here. And the coolest part about this bevel node is that you can go in the negative direction too. So you can start making like little mountains up this way. You know, so whatever you want to do, you can do. And it's really nice and versatile. And it's making normals as you go along. You can also change the kind of corner you have. So you can make an angular around. And that's talking about you know this little corner in here so if i'm making rocks and stuff i tend to go with angular if i'm doing stuff that i want to have a slightly softer look to it i'll use the rounded uh we're not going to worry about these two right now this is just giving you a choice of the kind of um, normal format you want to look at what i do want to do is look at the normal intensity because i can actually adjust the normal in here to be more so you know it's a pretty versatile node and what it also does is height so oh you know what the reason i'm not seeing height i was like i don't see any height in here and there's a reason because we forgot to set our height in the 3d viewer i'm going into materials 
default edit and just like everything else its information is going to appear in this window here I can set a bunch of different things I can set the tiling it'll do weird like interim numbers so you'll if you if you want your tiling if you want to actually check your tiling you need to make sure that this is a whole number otherwise uh, you know your edges don't match up I don't know why this well I'm sure there's a reason I would have made it an integer but for some reason it's a float uh, here's where I scale my height I'm gonna just put in one here and you see how all of a sudden I get height information as well and as we bring this number up it becomes more extreme and if we come back to our output again the information changes so whatever you have highlighted that information is going to show up in that window okay so we we've got a bevel set in so it looks pretty nice and we don't really need this anymore now you know my, my little graph here is growing and I want to keep it organized and there are a bunch of different ways to do that any node I can right click and add a comment and the nice thing about this is that it just kind of attaches to the um, to the node that you made it for so no matter where I have it it's going to kind of move along with it the other thing I can do is highlight a bunch of different nodes and add a frame and I can name the frame so we'll call this normal for now it's kind of a bunch of different things but for lack of a better word what I can also do is change its color so I can color code my frames if that's what I'm into sometimes I do sometimes I will um, color code the ones that I have functions on that are you know interactive for the end user just so I know what's it's just it's just an easier reference for me so it, it there are uses to having it different colors because this way I'll have like a group for like the normal a color whatever but then within that or outside of it you know you'll have something that can have its own little just color coded function you know, just color coded uh, information without even having to give it a name because it doesn't need a name you can get rid of that too and that's a very nice way of keeping things organized okay the next thing we want to do is to you know make them not be quite so perfectly smooth and for that we're going to go back to our library and we're going to look at some noises and there is a wide selection of noises available just in substance this is all native to the substance and you can use them in a variety of ways and today we're going to use this as a way of adding some texture to it and I'm going to go with dirt one and it, you know these are grayscale maps and this is you know it's like a you know grunge well you know it's like a texture that you could find on a brick or something made of rock but I've got this very high processing speed here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this less dense I don't need to have it you know that big so I'm gonna go I'm gonna highlight the node I'm gonna go into its base parameters and I'm gonna change its output size to parent size half so I'm gonna go minus one and that's gonna mean that every time the parent size changes it'll change along with it but it'll always be half of whatever the parent size is now you know we, we've got this normal map coming out of here but I want to also have a normal for this texture that's happening on top and because it's not a very deep thing that we want to do I'm gonna go and use just the regular normal without the height information and even then I think we're gonna probably want to tone it down some so I'm gonna bring this intensity down a little bit and we now have this other normal that we want to lay on top of our uh, you know the one that's coming out of the bevel so you know we we've used the blend before and we can grab another blend node oh I did not mean to do that it did that because that node was highlighted and I didn't that this that noodle was highlighted I didn't realize it yeah so if, if it was like this highlighted it would have just immediately dropped it in there just make sure nothing's highlighted 
and then you can drag it in. So we have our foreground. This is the thing that goes on top. The background, this is the image that is in the background and it's also where the size or any other information comes in that's inherited and then we have opacity and that's going to be a cutout mask which we're not going to use quite yet but soon enough so I'm going to take no I'm going to put I want to put this one in my background because I want to lay this stuff on top now this is actually a really good example. Um, remember, it, like, a, I guess a video or two ago, I was showing how, like, if things inherit. This is a classic example of not having to change this away from relative to input to relative to parent because it's getting its input from this bevel, which is at 2K, and not from this normal, which is at 1K. To play it safe, you can always change it. It does, it's, doesn't really make a difference. Well, I guess it costs just a smidge more if you look at the, um, the processing speed. So, you know, we'll keep it relative to input. But right now, all we're seeing is this one on top. Plug that in. We've, lo we've lost all the other information, and that's because we haven't actually set the blend. So we're going to leave the opacity alone, but I'm going to use an overlay blend. And now, clicking that one there, and now it's overlaying one on top of the other. If you go into the library, there is a thing called normal blend. I never use it. Honestly, it's like really expensive, and I don't see better results with it. I mean, you can mask, I mean, it's, it's like, it works like a blend, but it just costs more. Uh, so you can fool around with it. I've just never really used it because I get all the functionality I need out of the regular blend, but I'm just showing you that it's there. Okay. So we've got this texture that is overlying. It's still really shiny and we don't have any color on it. So those are going to be the next things that we address. I'm going to deal with the color first, and that's what we're going to do in the next video.